In this video, I'm going to talk about the Macintosh 2SI. The Macintosh 2SI was released October 15, 1990, discontinued March 15, 1993, had a 68030 processor running at 20 MHz, which Apple claimed was up to five times faster than the Macintosh SE. It was available in two or five megabyte configurations. Apple had a sprawling family of Macs in 1990, while it was the Macintosh 2X that was discontinued the day the 2SI was released, it was Apple's best-selling Mac 2, the CX, that the 2SI was targeted to eventually replace. The reason the 2CX was so popular was simply that it was Apple's lowest price Mac 2, and Apple realized the need for more affordable Macs in order to boost sales and market share. What with the base price of the 2CI at over 6,000 US dollars and the new 40 MHz 2FX with list prices in the neighborhood of $10,000. And so Apple introduced three budget minded computers in October 1990. Macintosh Classic, finally displacing the Plus and SE. The Macintosh LC, which would not actually ship until late January 1991. And of course, the Macintosh 2SI. In an introduction as hokey as they come, the Mac 2SI is brought from the factory to the Apple event on a golf cart driven by Steve Wozniak. This is more like a Three's Company episode. Hey, thanks. <laughs> at the heart of the Macintosh 2SI is a 68030 microprocessor running at 20 megahertz. I, That's up to five times the um, performance of the Macintosh SE, okay. our most popular Macintosh yeah. today. Yeah, I covered that already. The event went on to show videos of the Macintosh 2SI being successfully rolled out at small businesses in America. Press this to turn on the machine. It plays music. It's not quite as complicated as I would have thought of first time I looked at it. I think I can do this. Hello, my neck. <laughs> it's wonderful to be able to just take a chunk out of one program, move it over to the other program, and... Jesus. It's erasing. I didn't do anything. The last payment and fulfillment of the contract between Fontana Fashions and Allison Jones has passed due. This payment policing program is installed on all Allison Jones software. Bitch! <laughs> um, okay, maybe that last one was a scene from Single White Female. The movie featured the 2SI pretty heavily. <laughs> Stop laughing, it's not funny. Now all the new Macs have the same design aesthetic. The front of the computers are curved at a 50 inch radius and the face is angled toward the user so the computer is in a sense uh, looking at the user. The 2SI case design was never used for another model nor was the motherboard ever changed which is the only time that this has ever happened with a Mac. Well, almost. Not that there was anything wrong with the design, but with CD-ROM systems coming in, the case was just too limited. The 2SI was released with a price of about $3,800 for a 2 meg of RAM, 40 meg hard drive config, and nearly $4,600 for a 580 config. That's not including monitor or keyboard. Now one megabyte of that RAM was soldered to the motherboard, so why is that? Well, with the 2CX, you had to buy a video card and install it in one of the three new bus slots. For the 2SI, the video was built onto the motherboard. Only 8-bit color, mind you, but very convenient. Except that video needs RAM, so it uses that motherboard RAM. That's why it's there. The video takes between 64 and 320K of that memory, 
and because it's handling video, the RAM on the motherboard is very slow compared to the RAM sims. So you want to avoid your programs sharing that motherboard RAM with the video. That's why users would increase the disk cache to 768K to chew up the slow memory left over by the video, and their programs would run exclusively off the fast sims. Oh, we're still on this? Um, well, the sims had to be installed in an identical set of four. So if you install four one megabyte sims, you get five megabytes total, including the megabyte on the board. If you maxed out with four four megabyte sims, you have a 17 megabyte system. Later, eight and 16 megabyte sims would become available from third parties, allowing the 2SI to eventually max out at 65 megabytes. A nice new thing about the SIM slots is that they had metal retainer clips instead of the breakable plastic ones used on earlier Macs. The 2SI was to be released with the new system 6.06, .06, but on the day of introduction it was pulled for compatibility issues and 6.07 was put in its place. The 2SI is fast enough that you will want to run system 7 or 7.1 on it. Now Macintosh 2SI. Apparently, SI stood for Sleek Integrated Video. I would have guessed that the SI stood for Sound Input, because that was the key feature. It was the first Mac with built-in sound recording capability. Apple shipped a round microphone with an adhesive holder. In the end, stupid pebble-shaped microphone won more design awards than the 2SI itself. By the way, once that holder was in place, it is not coming off. Right out of the box, you could make your own awesome error alerts like these. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Okay. Alright, so maybe that wasn't such a good thing. If you bought a 2SI, you got HyperCard 2. Here you can make voice notes in your stacks. So I can dictate into my computer? Whoa! You also got a HyperCard stack introducing the Macintosh 2SI. They have a section on available monitors, which is strange since if you were looking at the stack, you already had a monitor. Anyway, Apple offered four monitors for the 2SI. 13-inch RGB monitor, which had been around forever, and it's the one I'm using in this video. The conspicuous portrait monitor, which was paired with the 2CI earlier in this video. Then there were brand new low-cost 12-inch color and black and white displays, released with the new Macs. Good price, but the downside of the 12-inch displays is that they had the same resolution as the Compact Max, 512 by 384 So if your software required 640 by 480 the program would not run. Also, because the power cord is hardwired on the 12-inchers, you can't take advantage of the plug-in on the 2SI's power supply. Unlike every previous Mac, the 2SI had no programmer switch, which was done for cost savings. Instead, you would use keyboard combinations to reset and interrupt. It did have a power button in the back, which could also be turned and locked if you wanted it always on, like a server. Also introduced was the new Apple Keyboard 2, replacing the old Apple Keyboard from 1987. Note that the section at the back of the keyboard matches the width of the 2SI precisely. Nonetheless, the full-size Apple Extended Keyboard 2 was a more popular pairing with the 2SI. The old 1987 mouse was still the standard at the time. At 20 MHz, the 2SI hit a sweet spot in speed between the former 2CX at 16 MHz and the 2CI at 25 MHz. 
except the system and processor of the 2SI are technically capable of 25 MHz. In fact, it was designed to be a 25 MHz machine, but Apple decided it did not want it to compete with the higher profit 2CI. So they simply changed the clock crystal, the oscillator, to make the processor function at 20 MHz. And so technical users could just swap out the oscillator and have a 25 MHz machine. The hallmark of the Mac 2 line was new bus slots to cater the machine to your needs with expansion cards. But all the 2SI got was a processor direct slot like the SE and the SE30 had. It was also the first Mac 2 without a math coprocessor. Apple solved this by offering adapter cards for the PDS slot. The adapters had a card slot and the math coprocessor on it. Now what I've got here is a cheap third-party adapter card, so it's missing the math coprocessor, but you get the idea. The math coprocessor sped up computational tasks if you were using scientific software or Microsoft Excel spreadsheets, for example. What is this? It's, it's blank. Now look at that. That's the logo of Lotus 123, Excel's biggest competition in spreadsheets at the time. I don't know... Oh, oh, oh. Geez, Microsoft. That could not have helped your Monopoly case. The 2SI ROM was soldered on the motherboard, rather than using a ROM SIM like the SE30 did. Except there was still a spot for a ROM SIM on the board. The thing is, some early units have a ROM SIM installed. If the 2SI has the ROM SIM, the computer cannot operate without it. The best guess is that Apple had it there as a failsafe. If a serious problem with the onboard ROM was discovered after production began, they could fix it on a ROM SIM and redirect the ROM calls there. Otherwise, they would have to scrap or rework production boards. The fact that ROM SIMs for the SI exist indicates that this did happen. The 2CX was famous for being able to be disassembled by hand, and the 2SI was designed to continue this tradition. The most tricky part of this is the fan and the power supply. Those two are pressed against each other, yet both have side tabs that have to be squeezed to release them. I suggest attacking the power supply first. There are two tabs on each side that have to be pressed. Here you can better see without the other components. And you have to pull back a tab at the front at the same time. <laughs> Baby, you make me wish I had three hands. Exactly. So if you get a knife and press in the left tab, and then the other two with your fingers, then you should be able to yank it. The fan had two plastic retainer clips, so you can now squeeze both sides and pull. Another thing, uh, let me pop out the motherboard here. SIs were known for having sound loss issues, and that's because they designed the speaker and the motherboard to connect only by contact. Polishing the contacts with a pencil eraser is often cited as a fix for SIs with sound issues. By the way, if you want to clean up the 2SI case of pen and pencil marks, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser works really well. The release of these three computers caused Apple's sales to soar, reversing Apple's fortunes for a time. The Macintosh 2SI would be replaced in 1993 by the Sentra 610, a 25 megahertz 040 machine. But that's for another video. For now, it is time for shutdown of the Macintosh 2SI. Hey, she can't oh. take much more, Captain. The orb coolers, they're going to blow. Jeez. I'll change the bag. Okay, wait.